All right, so what we've got here is um, using some uh, if-else statement to load up this, this text. And um, the way we did it was running a function once, once everything loads in the main body. Now, another way to do this is uh, notice here, line 24, just as an example, uh, we have another way to to make something happen based on if the document, the HTML document, is ready. This should accomplish the same thing without an extra, the extra, the need for uh, creating that function. So this is just kind of optional <coughs> here. But another way to accomplish the same thing is to see this line here, not line 24. We're referencing the document itself once it's ready, meaning once everything has loaded on screen, then uh, we run uh, the if-else. And then that should load up either the, um, the, the false result or the, or the true result. So that's just another way to do it. Um, there's just so many ways to accomplish the same sort of thing. And I think that's one of the strengths of, 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 J, of JavaScript, in that if you already come from another programming language idiom, you might already have ideas about how something can be accomplished. And then to do something similar in, uh, in JavaScript, often you have these various options to do it. So both of these methods should accomplish the same thing. Uh, perhaps one is more intuitive, or another is, um, is more elegant, and so forth. This one, however, relies on that we are using jQuery because notice there's the there's the the dollar symbol notation here, and that has to do with jQuery. So if we don't have jQuery uh, connected to our file, this this wouldn't work this way. Um, so this is just another way for you to accomplish the same thing. And because there's um, so much that you could do with JavaScript because it's a, uh, a very powerful language. Uh, the next issue was we were going to work on, uh, at the moment, it has my name on the front screen, and then if I go to my other screens, I wanted to say my name there as well. At the moment, uh, I'm going to come back to that because I, I should have uh, double-checked my code first before starting here, and I apologize for that. Usually I'm pretty prepared. This thing that I wanted to show you, I don't have it quite prepared, so we'll get back to it. But uh, eventually we'll have this so that your name can appear on different screens. It works at least on the first one, so that's good. But um, to give you the full solution, I have to come back to that. So. Uh, we're going to change gears a little bit, but any questions so far on what we've done uh, today? Okay, so what I want to do then, what I've also got on the agenda is we can get to a point, we've gotten to a point I believe where we still have to fill in some details and such of what's actually in the app, like um, here, it's not going to say gibberish forever, but uh, I want to work on a few other things. Um, Ultimately, remember, the end result of this um, class, of this month, is that we have a web version of our project that could be uploaded to a server and that people can access on, on their web browser. And then when we're finished with that, on the next class next month, we're going to have then, we're finally going to get into Android, and it's going to be an Android app. Uh, so what I want to do is deal with... Uh, as my example shows, when you when you go to my example, <coughs> not that one. When you go to my example, we load a, a pop-up happens that detected that you were not on a mobile device, and then therefore it will show you the desktop version of the project. If we go to the same address on your mobile device, it'll detect you're on a mobile device and serve you the mobile version of the project. So that's what we're gonna we're gonna do right now. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, browser detection here. 
so that we can uh, serve the appropriate the appropriate um, file. So here's what we'll do. Uh, go ahead and um, close uh, your Kodika file and your index file for the moment and go over to the folder where our project exists. So just uh, uh, close those two files and go to your folder. And so what we've got here is our index file and the directions file and the two supporting files and then images. This ultimately will be the core of our app once we get there. But right now it's the core of our mobile, of our mobile app, our, our, our web app. And if you recall, if you if you go back here, it all exists inside of a mobile website folder, which is inside of our September 25th folder. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to have a new index file here on this level that does the work of detecting are we on a mobile device or on a, uh, on a, on a desktop computer. And if we're on a mobile device, then show us the index file in the mobile website folder, or else show us the desktop version. So remember way back when we did the sketch on the, on the wall, that's what we had, that the whole project was inside of a folder, the mobile website's in a project folder, but then outside of it is, is this first screen that we see in the example. this screen right here. And this screen also is the one that's going to detect this. Uh, now, in production, when this is finished, it's not going to pop up and give us this annoying message, because it would be pretty annoying for people to come to our website and then every time tell you, please come to our mobile site, please come to our mobile site. This is just a proof of concept that it works. Once it works, it won't actually pop up anything. It'll be seamless that it goes to the mobile if you're on mobile, or that it goes to desktop if you're on desktop. So that means, let's go back to our September 25th um, folder here. Let's right click on an empty area and go to New Text Document. And we'll call this index.html. Remove the .txt. Make sure it says .html. <laughs> if it complains about changing the extension, we know what we're doing, so say yes. So this is a quick way to create a blank HTML file, which now we can edit in Notepad. And we'll deal with this browser detection. Right click and click new and do what? Text document. Mm -hmm. And then when you get the new text document, make sure you call it index.html. So basically what's going to happen is when the when the web user uh, first goes to victor.com, they will go to that index file. Some JavaScript will happen to detect uh, the appropriate course of action. If you're on mobile, then it'll take you to the mobile site. Or if you're on desktop, it'll instead take you to the desktop version. So let's edit that index file. We have to create a very, very simple, very basic HTML5 document. So again, again with the doc type. HTML head body
title So very simple page like this, and uh, notice also what I've got highlighted here. Uh, the script tags, so we can write a little JavaScript. No, actually, we're going to use plain old JavaScript, not jQuery mobile or jQuery. Plain old JavaScript, and nowadays with modern web browsers, this is all that we need, which defines that this is JavaScript. All right, so within the script tag, we need to do a few things. We need to um, detect uh, the, the web browser, so let's try this. Um, let's let's open up our good old alert function which will make a pop-up happen and what we're going to do is have it display have the web browser display a little bit about itself so here we'll write navigator dot user agent with an A capital so save and run this Firefox if you want um, save and run this. You should get a pop-up screen. That's what alert does. And then something which I'll explain in a moment, the, the navigator.user agent. Alright, so if you save and run this, you should get a pop-up. And mine says Mozilla 5.0, Windows NT 6.1, WoW 64, etc. Revision 31, Gecko, blah blah blah, Firefox. Okay, interesting, so I'll click OK. Goes away. Did everyone get that pop-up? Okay, so Let's go back to Notepad and let's this time run it in Chrome. So we didn't change anything, just run it in Chrome. Get the pop up. This one says Mozilla 5.0, Windows NT 6.1, wow, blah, 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 Apple WebKit, blah, 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 Chrome 37, Safari 537. Okay, interesting. Back to Notepad and we'll run it in Internet Explorer. Get the pop-up. That says a little bit more. Mozilla 5.0, Windows NT, etc. Trident 7.0, SLC.net, etc., etc. Like Gecko. And right here, revision 11. So what's coming up here? This is known as the user agent string. This is um, the web browser telling you about itself. User agent. That's the very technical term for your web browser. Um, so the web browser is explaining about itself. Now notice I see here, um, uh, if I go up to help about Internet Explorer, it would tell me I've got Internet Explorer 11. And I see that right here, revision 11. And then over on Chrome, I see that it says Chrome 37. And if I go into their help somewhere there, it'll say you've got Chrome 37. And same thing with Firefox 
31. So the web browser tells you basically uh, what it is, what version it has, and, and a bunch of other things. And notice because I'm on Windows, mine says I'm on Windows version 6.1, which is uh, Windows 7, basically. 64-bit processor, etc. So each, every web browser tells you a little bit different about itself and perhaps what computer it's running on. If we were to load up that same file on our mobile device, like on an Android device, it would say something about Android OS something, etc. something. And if we load it up on an iPhone, it would say something about perhaps iOS 8.1, whatever. It would, every, every user agent identifies itself with some information. That's what we're going to use to um, figure out are we on a mobile device or on a desktop, and then redirect people to the proper location. What makes this a little tricky, though, is notice all three of them say Mozilla. Wait a minute, I thought only Firefox was Mozilla. It's in the name, Mozilla <laughs> Firefox. Well, that's just sort of an archaic holdover thing in that many of the modern web browsers have evolved from a common ancestor. The very first web browser was called World Wide Web by Tim Berners-Lee, and then eventually there was uh, NCSA Mosaic. Anyone remember Mosaic? And then after that, there was the whole uh, Netscape Navigator. Anyone remember Netscape Navigator? And then that eventually evolved into Mozilla Foundation, which had Mozilla Firefox. You should look up the web browser history article on, on Wikipedia. It's, it's big, because it tells you everything about every web browser. But basically, now the modern web browsers have evolved from a common, uh, common core, and that's why they all say nowadays basically Mozilla, even though this is clearly Internet Explorer. So we cannot exactly do a test to determine uh, which browser am I on if I was thinking, well, if I'm, on, if I'm on an Android phone, probably people are on Chrome or maybe some other browser. So we're limited that way. Uh, notice we have a lot of common, other common things that are shown. Windows. They all say Windows. If, on the, if I'm on the Mac, it should say Mac somewhere there. Um, so what we'll do is um, this data, as soon as you click OK, it, it, you know, it displays and it goes away. But I want to capture that information. I want to capture it. So we'll, we can put it in a variable. I suppose we can put it in a local storage object, but we'll do a variable. Uh, on line 6, let's refine line 6 actually so that it says VAR UA equals whatever whatever the uh, user agent is, we're going to capture it into this variable. Actually, we don't need the pop-up at the moment. We just need it to capture navigator.userAgent. The alert was there just to, for it to show it to us on screen. I just wanted to, whatever the data is in user agent, capture it, put it in this variable for safekeeping. Now that I've captured it, I can do some um, conditional statements with it. I can check if this is true, do that, or else do this. So we'll do again an if else statement. <coughs> so create this basic if else statement. So, just to see how this is going to work, inside of this if, we'll type UA. And what I want to do is, uh, if ch I want to check 
if a uh, value exists inside of this variable. So we've captured all of that text, right? It said uh, Mozilla 5.0, Windows, WoW 64, Light Gecko, etc. It captured all of that text. And what I want to do is I want to see if I can capture, if I can check if any of this data exists inside of that string. So then I'll say dot match, match, open and close parentheses. So basically we're going to run match to that variable. We're going to use the method of match to check for something inside of that string to see if we find something. We'll check, we'll type slash. Uh, first we'll check for something that I know should be there. Windows. All of these said Windows. And to see if this is working, we'll make a we'll make an alert pop-up box up here that says we're on Windows. Again, um, when you're writing code, we could have errors in we could have errors in um, in syntax or errors in logic oops i think i'm forgetting a slash here windows and then slash uh so we have errors in logic or errors in um in syntax syntax is that we wrote something wrong and logic is that it's not doing what i think it should be doing So go ahead and run that. <clears throat> if it worked, and like I said, I forgot this trailing slash here. If you didn't write it, make sure you write that Windows slash. Uh, if it worked, you should get a pop-up that says, we're on Windows. It worked for me. Now watch this. If I put Windows lowercase, nothing happens. <coughs> so on if, I'm saying if we can match the term Windows inside of UA, which holds the user agent string, then display the alert that says we're on Windows. With a capital W, we do match it. There is the term Windows in the user agent string with a capital W. So if we don't want to deal with uppercase and lowercase, after that slash, add an I to make it case insensitive so that uppercase and lowercase shouldn't matter. There we go. So now, if we put if we put an I after the slash, it doesn't matter. Uppercase, lowercase. I don't want to have to deal with that because technically they are different. Uppercase W is different from lowercase W. Yes. Why, um, why is it not why is it slashes? Yeah, it's not quotes. Um, because we're using, uh, I think, because we're using match, the method match, which does, which does not require the quotes. It's used in a regular expression. We're doing a regular expression. So match normally uses a regular expression? Yeah, so the, the slash defines the beginning and ending of a regular expression. You can use other characters, but the slash is traditional. OK, so we're using a regular expression, which is a way to um, search for and define 
uh, strings. So basically, it's uh, trust me, this is how it works. <laughs> Sometimes it just is what it is. We've been using the quotes everywhere, but in this case, because it's a regular expression, and we can look up exactly what regular expressions are, but it's a way to search for, for, for text um, in a very powerful way. Um, so, this became true. If this is true, display the first result in this first section. Or else it's false, do nothing. Notice nothing happened when it was lowercase. So we'll, we'll, um, we can have another alert here if there's an else. Um, so when this becomes true, something will happen. When it becomes false, something else will happen. So um, we could say this, this will work. This makes sense, though, if we're on Windows. Um, but not really targeting if we're on a desktop or an iPhone or Android. So we're going to have this search for something else. And we have to and it kind of trust that this will work because we're not really going to fully be able to test it on the mobile device to get the answer. Here at least I'm seeing that um, we're getting a result from searching if. So what we'll say is, let's say, Uh, we're going to search for Android. If in the user agent string it says Android, we're pretty sure that we're on an Android device. Android doesn't show up if you're on Internet Explorer on your desktop computer, or Firefox on your laptop, uh, or Safari. So our alert will make it say we're on Android. Else alert we're on Windows. At least we can say we're not on Android. Right, because we're trying to check if we can match the string Android, that means we're on Android, or else we can't match it, so it goes to false, which is we're not, we are not on Android. If we save and run this, we should see that the second condition we're on Android. We're not on Android. Shows up. Alright, did that work for you? Did you get we're not on Android? Right, so this is what I'm saying about um, we're not going to be able to get the pop-up to happen that says we're on Android unless we use a real Android device or an emulator. But we're assuming uh, that it'll work because the previous match worked. Now this, this obviously works, but this is excluding iPhone users. So we can say, uh, check if we're on Android or iPhone. So let's change our code like this. Let's put some parentheses around UA and then parentheses here. I want to put parentheses around this first check right here. So you should have two open parentheses on the left and three closing on the right. Three because this one goes with this one this one goes with that one, and then that one goes with the whole if. So after, between the last two, 
then we want to add an or command here to say, check if we're on Android or iPhone. Now on JavaScript, to write the or command, we have to um, put the pipe character, which is shift backslash. Now be careful here. This is a slash, the one that we see all the time. This is a backslash. You should not get them confused now anymore. Don't ever say HTTP colon backslash backslash yahoo.com backslash index backslash whatever. These are backslashes. They go back. These are slashes. This is what you've been seeing for 20 years. Not a backslash. We want a backslash here. Shift backslash, which gives us the pipe character. A little vertical line. Two of them side by side. That in JavaScript means or. Check for this or check for this, or check for this. We can have as many as we want. Again, the pipe character. On some keyboards, the pipe character is actually a broken line, a broken vertical line. I have some keyboards that show that. It's weird. On these keyboards, it seems that they have them correct. It's one simple vertical line on the backslash, right below backspace. And you get to it with shift. <coughs> little space there, and then open close parentheses. And within those parentheses, then we'll do the same thing here, ua.match slash uh, iPhone. And uh, we'll be able to check for both of those, this or that. So ua.match. Match has its own opening and closing parentheses, so that's why you'll see again three, parent three closing parentheses. That's why uh, Notepad is really nice because it highlights your pairs, so that when you see all of these uh, redundant ones, you don't think, did I put an extra one? And we'll say slash iPhone slash I, so that it doesn't care if it's uppercase P or not. What's an iPhone on? Last I checked, this is iPhone, yes. All right, so we've got a check of two possibilities with the or. Remember on Google Maps code, there was the and, double and. That means check this and this and this and this. If you use and, they all have to be true. You have to have somehow be on all those devices at once. With or, any of these can be true, and then we will do the true condition. Question. Um, so, you have Android for Android, iPhone for iPhone. What about a Windows phone? Yes, so Windows now... Does it register as Windows? And then it no, it does, it does register as its own user agent string. Uh, so here we have to decide how many of these do we want to pay attention to, because we haven't mentioned BlackBerry, we haven't mentioned, uh, what else is there, Fire, 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 Fire OS from Amazon, which might be Android. So um, this method is pretty straightforward, but we could easily fill it with like 10 ORs. You have to decide how, how many phones you want to target. So if we target these two, this is like 90%, uh, 95% of the market. Um, but just as an example, uh, let me do one more. You can do this one if you want, but I'm going to do another or. So the pipes again. Another open close parentheses, another ua.match. This time it'll be slash ie mobile. That's what Windows phones use on their default web browser, i.e. mobile. I don't know what the BlackBerry one is, I'd have to look it up, but it would be the same thing. Or UA Match, maybe BB. BB browser. I don't know what it is, but we can add another or, and then we can add as many as we want here. With, with, with what we've done here, we've probably covered about 98% of the market. So now we can we should actually change this. We're on Android? No, we're on mobile. We're on a mobile device. 
So then here we can say we're not on a mobile device. I.E. Mobile. So our pop-up happens here that uh, it says we're not on a mobile device. And just to kind of make it look like the example, we'll, we'll make it display the user agent string uh, for people's information. So after here we're not on a mobile device, uh, we'll add um, backslash n backslash n, which will give us a new line. After the quotes, we'll do plus ua. ua is the variable that holds the string that is the person's user agent. So this, if we save it and run it, we should get the else result. We're not on Android or iPhone or IE Mobile. That goes to else, so that probably means you're not on mobile device. Yes, we're not counting Blackberry and other ones, uh, but no one else does. So we're going to save and run that, and then we're going to see if we get this result. And it has that text. Okay, so I get the pop-up and it says you're not on a mobile device, and then it tells you the information of your non-mobile device user agent string. <coughs> Did that work for everyone? Okay, well that's all nice. The concept of it works, but it doesn't actually do what I want yet. This is what I'm saying about um, the logic of it all. We need to make sure that the that the that the code works, the logic of it works comes after that too. So this alert it works, but I uh, I'm going to comment both of those alerts out. I know that I know that the else works. Uh, the if and the else, they both work. I'm going to comment that out because I don't actually need the pop-ups. I need it to do something. And again, we're not going to be able to fully test this, so we're going to cheat a little bit. The assumption is that if you're on Android, show me the mobile version. We're not going to be able to test that. So we know that else works because we're on desktop. So we're going to, for the moment, make it that it's. we're going to pretend that we are on a mobile device and so under else, we're going to show the mobile version of the site. 
If that works, then we just move the code to the if portion, because we're not going to be able to test if we're not on mobile. So after that alert here, we're going to add this JavaScript location dot replace, open close parentheses, semicolon. So this would normally be in the if portion, because we're on mobile, but we're putting it on the desktop area because we that's what we can test for. Question? Well, we're not finished with it yet, but what we're going to be doing is that if we were on a mobile device, our current location would be replaced with another location, another page. So that's the term that it uses, location, instead of a web page. So think about it as changing our current web page to another web page. That's the location, and we're going to replace it. So inside of replace, we then need to specify, well, what, what location do we mean? Remember that here in our in our folder, we've got our index file inside of mobile website. So inside of replace, in quotes, we're going to write mobile underscore website. That's the name of the folder that way back Kodika gave us. Wait, why are you putting that there? Well, like I said, we're not going to be able to test it uh, on an Android device for the full effect. We're putting it under the else section, which we know will work. All I want to do is make sure that we go into this uh, this other location. And then we'll put it properly in the if question. Well, given the can we what? Yes, yes, definitely. Right now we're just making it work. We're just making sure it works for desktop, and then we'll put some comments. But it's not going to be the final code. Yes. Previously, when you wanted to go to a different page, you did the anchor tag with the H run. Mm -hmm. We cannot do that here because uh, on those other methods it required user input. A person clicked on a button to go to a location. Here, we want this to happen before any user input. Are we on mobile? Take us to the mobile device. Or else we must be on a desktop. Take us to the desktop. And as I said, this is just a, a hack for the moment. So this, this I just want to see if this works. If we save it and run it, what should happen instantaneously basically is it'll automatically go from the desktop blank screen right into the mobile screen. And make sure you finish writing the code here. Mobile underscore website slash index dot html. So I'm going to save that and run it. <coughs> and what should happen is instantaneously, pretty much. I'm loading the, that index file, and right away it goes to the mobile version. Because it goes through the code, it checks, are we on mobile? We are, but we can't, I mean, we're not, but we can't test it. Therefore, we're on desktop. So right away, replace our current location, replace our current, our current address with this one. And so in the blink of an eye, it just goes right away to the desk to the to the mobile version. <coughs> exactly. It, we don't even know it's there. That's what location replace does. Replaces it replaces the place in history that you're at. It doesn't leave any history. There's something else. 
that we can leave history, but here what we've done is we've made no history so that it just goes where it should. Did that work for everyone? Anyone need some help? So if we go to our folder mm -hmm. where we have the mobile website folder within the private, we could copy that folder and create one that says like desktop website and then Exactly. Yeah, this is how we can direct people to where they where, where they should go. Definitely. Now, if this works, we actually need it to to be like this. We we know that it works. I tested mine and it, and it works. But actually, the location replace should be under the if section. So cut and paste it. Move it over. We just wanted to check. I just wanted to show you this is the method to do this. Location.replace dynamically moves you from one URL, from one location, from one page to another page. It works. But it needs to work this way when someone goes to it on their mobile device, either Android or iPhone or Windows Phone or Blackberry, whatever. Once one of those conditions is true, I'm on Android, yes. Loca location replace to the mobile version done or else nothing happens or perhaps another location replace to desktop website which doesn't exist but you get the idea right the desktop version of the site would be on its own folder perhaps and then it takes us over there or the way I've got it in my example at VM Campos there's no else. It just keeps you on that index file. And that index file is the desktop version. So there must be at least uh, the alert in the else. Yes, the alert does show up there. So you, you put in, under the else, you put in the alert and then you do the same location replacement. You don't have to anyway. you don't have to do any replacement, any location replacement. Let me show you my code up here if it wants to load. Um, okay, so this is my live my live example. We get the pop-up like we've been doing here. And if we look at our code, this is the code of that test site. It's the same stuff we did here basically. But then under else, it's just the alert. No location replacement because then the whole desktop begins here. The, the desktop version of the site begins here as a normal HTML document. That just saves us from creating another different structure. Just keep it in this one file. And what displays is this. So the whole... this index file that we get to has the, has the user agent checker and it has the desktop version so that if a person needs to go to mobile, it'll take them to mobile, or else else just keeps them in this screen, which is the full version of the, <coughs> of the website. Right, did that work for everyone? You're not going to see any result, really, if you save and run this blank screen, because the else gives you no feedback unless you uncomment your alert. It keeps you in the plain old index file. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't direct you anywhere. But I guess if you want some sort of result, I'm going to uncomment that alert under else, so that when I run it, it tells me you're not on mobile, you're there, you're stuck. Under body, is it mobile site? I'm going to put a manual link here. If it didn't detect your mobile device, 
we'll always have a way for a person in the body just to click visit mobile site. This is just filler. So that you can see something when uh, when your else runs. So if I run that, then it just loads this plain old welcome to SDCE, take a class, it's the desktop version. There's the button down there to visit the mobile website version manually, or if you had this uploaded to a web server, you would go to it on your mobile device, and um, it would do the detection, it would see that I'm on IE mobile, and it would take me to the mobile device, the mobile friendly version. Any questions so far?